Adapt and overcome. This is what YouTube Fitness wants. This is what YouTube Fitness gets. Connor put on a Facetune filter on the Sony camera. This isn't even my real body. Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike, back to another video. We got kind of a compilation of three or four days of training. Uh, my schedule since I've been back from mini vacation, a little bit of travel, uh, switched up a little bit. So I decided to take kind of the strength training, um, the strength focus training a little bit more serious. I was going to 24 hour fitness two or three times a week, Ben's once or twice, Occam Athletics, and then Allen's once. Um, but I decided to go all in, try to push the squat, try to push some of this weightlifting, uh, and really feel good. As I moved into this house early October, um, you guys know I was dealing with some back injuries. Um, I didn't have like necessarily a gym close by. I didn't want to drive everywhere. Uh, Alan's a good friend and his gym and his facility is awesome, but it's about half an hour away. And so I just found my routine of kind of getting some fluff and puff and basically training only accessories. Um, I was squatting here and there, but not much. I wasn't deadlifting uh, and I was doing flat barbell bench a little bit, but mostly dumbbell stuff and some machines. Uh, kind of give myself a mental and physical break. Uh, since uh, kind of the springtime came around, I've dove back into heavier squats, squatting three or four times a week. And now that we're at Ben's, I'm going literally Monday through Thursday, opening up with some type of squat, getting into some type of um, weightlifting, clean, snatch, something like that, throwing something over my head, some kind of pull, not necessarily a deadlift, but something a little bit lighter, like a clean pull, stiff leg RDL, something of that nature. Uh, and then now that I've kind of found my groove with my strength, it's time to layer back in my accessories. Throw this part back in the beginning. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to build accessories, how to build muscle, how to continue to build your physique while keeping your strength programming and strength gains, how to layer both, how to mix in both. Some may call it power building. I just think it's more about training for the purpose of strength and keeping some accessories so you still look good naked. If you wanna get involved, give this thing a thumbs up. Hope you enjoy the video. Uh, so basically what I decided to do is just uh, with my upper body, since I'm getting so much volume from the squats, uh, I'm deadlifting once a week. Again, we're doing those pulls two or three times a week. Plus the weightlifting movements, although they're sub-maximal, they're all highly dom uh, dominated by the lower body. Quads, hams, glutes, um, holding different positions in the uh, you know traditional weightlifting li lifts. Um, so I'm basically just then, on top of that, layering in kind of a push-pull. So every Monday, uh, in Wednesday, I'm gonna be doing some kind of push. Right now, my exercises are gonna mostly be like an incline dumbbell press, because that's what my chest responds well to, my pectorals responds well to. Just a couple sets, I don't overthink it. I will try to slowly progress in sets, reps, or even the weight I'm using with the dumbbells. Um, and then one or two tricep movements, something kind of behind the head, get kind of a long head in a stretch position, and then some type of push down, something of that nature. On the uh, opposite days, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, we'll be doing back and biceps. Um, I remember, again, I'm already doing a lot of low back stuff with the poles, with the weightlifting, um, but I'll get some kind of lats. So today um, we did fat bar rows. I wanna do some chin-ups also, but I just got so exhausted. It's hot outside and our pace was good and those rows really took it out of me. So I felt a nice little pump in my back. Uh, and then I did two bicep movements. I did kind of a hammer curl, just handling something a little bit heavier. Uh, and then I did, uh, they have a cable that's actually um, like compression. It's not uh, weights. Um, and so it really feels a really good squeeze on there. I've never used a machine like this by Kaiser Fitness, I think. Not sponsored, but a uh, really cool feel on it. So then I just did a one arm, kind of pump out with that, uh, get a little blood into the biceps and leave. And I'll be doing that twice a week. So one or two backer movements, one or two bicep movements. I'll try to keep the movements pretty basic, some type of row, some type of vertical pull, chin up, pull up, uh, and then one or two biceps are simple enough. Uh, you know, if I was to do it perfectly, I'd probably do one kind of supinating elbow by my body and then elbow in front of my body like a preacher or something to make sure I'm hitting um, all my basis on the bicep. But those are the ways you can layer things in if your sport is so specific. That's the same layer with powerlifting. Um, you know, if your squat bench dead is the majority of your volume and you're pretty exhausted after all that, which once you get to a, a late beginner, intermediate, let alone advanced or late uh, intermediate stage, you have to get a lot of volume in the specific movements or close variations of the squat bench dead or snatch and clean and jerk, um, that sometimes your energy is just not there for accessories. Um, obviously, uh, you can still build muscle with those traditional lifts, and you will. But if you just want to get a little bit more beach ready, if you want to 
hit some of the basis that, you know, chin-ups do work your bicep a little bit, you know, some kind of row or pull or even deadlifts do work your lats a little bit. Um, but if you want more specific, which I do at this stage in my lifting, um, I'm no pro bodybuilder. I'm obviously not a pro power lifter. Definitely not a great weight lifter, but I do want to touch all my bases, feel a little more athletic, still smash some weights on my squat and deadlift, um, and then still feel good uh, about how my physique looks and also just kind of keep it well-rounded. And while keeping it well-rounded, you'll hopefully um, you know, reduce the risk of injury. So it's kind of a combination of want to look good, want to feel good, and also reducing the risk of injury because even you know, recently with the jammed wrist, it's just so frustrating for me to mentally and physically be capable of lifting more weight in the clean and jerk or the clean uh, specifically. But my wrist just can't catch it right now. My mobility is bad. And so then my mind is harping on my wrist hurting rather than focusing on pulling the movement and, and, and getting down the motor pattern of the clean. But uh, I'm excited. I feel really, really good. It's hot as whatever, you know, old man saying goes right there. Uh, 102 degrees outside, so I got a really good sweat. Nice little workout, just front squatted. Um, we're squatting heavy yesterday. Uh, I did like 420 for a bunch of reps with no belt. 420-ish. Uh, so I just did front squats today. I'll probably belt up squat tomorrow. Maybe take Thursday off and then uh, we got a guest coming Friday. So be sure to subscribe. Hot videos coming in. I appreciate you guys for hanging out. It's on the mic. I'm out of here. Big guys, you have a shitty rack position because you're big and you got a lot of muscles, okay? This is my big guy trick for front squats and clean rack position. It's better if you have someone to help you. I'll probably help uh, you and Mike out when you do this. Put straps on. Relax, you'll be safe, okay? And then this forces your wrist to be more neutral, okay? A lot of times you have to crank your wrist back if you have uh, uh, bad shoulder mobility because your wrists are downstream away from your shoulders, okay? So they take the brunt of the impact, okay? But this forces your shoulders to be, or your wrist to be more neutral, so it will force more mobility in your shoulders, okay? You can go ahead and just hold it out here like this, make sure it loosens up a little bit, Maybe even do a few front squats if you feel safe, and then rack it. And then by the time you're ready to do your front squats, which I don't have full grip on, it should feel a little bit better, a little bit easier for your elbows to get up, okay? Nice and gentle. Right one's working, left one's still hurting. This one? Yeah, I'm touching it. We're in there. Just be nice and gentle with it. It's going to be painful. But look, it's getting behind his big ass delt right there. That's where you want it to be. And his wrist is more neutral. Okay? I'm going to work on this side a little bit. This one's not as good. That one hurts. Yeah. But if you do this for a couple sets, especially in this heat, it should loosen up enough. All right, rack that, it's probably painful. Woo! Yeah. You don't even have to unrack it. You can leave a rack and just push your, your elbows through. Yeah, and then push your hips back as your elbows are through. You know. Yeah. yeah. As long as you get it to that exact position right away, it should be less impact on your wrist. Obviously, you're looking for more a purchase on the bar with their full grip. But hey, hey, I've been doing this for years, and still, this is how I catch it clean. This is how I do it. Yeah, but all right. Nice. Does that look good? Comment below if this is not the best t-shirt you've ever... I always say it wrong. I want you to comment, and I also want you to beef up my ego on I'm the best t-shirt shopper you've ever seen. Comment and let me know that this is the best t-shirt you've ever seen. There you go. Pretty new to this YouTube thing. Give me a break. I'm here for the pain. <laughs> oh. I think you're supposed to do it without the wrap. Well, I'm just stretching still. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that left wrist. Because this one, I think I could actually squat yeah. with the thing on. It's just this one's still hovering because of the stupid wrist up there. Yeah.
Maybe in a couple weeks, we'll yeah. get a full grip. A full grip squat would be cool. That'd be awesome. Even if it's light, right? Yeah. You'd be able to smash like a free grip with that. Oh, yeah. Even that. Yeah. Look at that. That's a miracle. Oy. Oy. Something, team. Is that a grip you turn from? Kind of? Kind of, yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Grips in the air. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy how it feels so heavy like that. But here you like do a set, you sit down, and right. you're like, damn, that hurt, and yeah. then you have to go do a set again. Right. For basketball, you don't have time to breathe. That's one of the reasons I specifically like taking short breaks. Yeah, yeah, you can't think, just move. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, even if it's not injured, it's just a confidence thing to wait. You're better off just playing even go. Close at the bottom? Oh yeah. You're ready for muscle and fitness.